Alright, get it, get it, get it. What's up Jeep fans, and maybe CrossFit fans, it's John from Bleepin' Jeep, back with the TDI XJ, and we're talking about the engine mounts that I used, the transmission mount that I put in there, the cross member that I built for the transmission, as well as those awesome Adams drive shafts that I put in here, and how to measure for those. Ow. Sorry, no more CrossFit. Done with CrossFit. Let's do the motor mounts and the transmission mount and all that stuff I was just talking about. But first, really love it if you'd subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, like this video, share it with your friends. Just a little more CrossFit. Okay, done. We're done. If you can, support us on Patreon. Helps us bring you awesome content all the time. And you can also follow me on Instagram, at bleepinjeepjohn. Let's get into it. If you go with TD Conversion's engine mounts like I did, you'll get a bunch of loose pieces that need to be welded together. The reason for this is because, as you saw in the adapter video that I did, there is the ability to clock the engine to tilt it, you know, passenger side or driver's side or basically in the center. So what you get in that package is both the frame side and the engine side of the mount. Frame side, you're able to slide forward and backward and it's contoured to the shape of the XJ frame rail in the engine bay. It uses the factory bolts that held the XJ mount to the frame. And then on the other side, you get two preformed pieces that fit nicely to the block. For building your mounts, I would recommend having the engine, adapter, and transmission bolted together, even if it's just for mock-up. This will allow you to mount the transmission, even if just temporarily, to the transmission cross member that came from the factory. What you can do is to bolt into just two of the four bolts that hold the transmission uh, bracket to the transmission mount. And that will accommodate for how far forward the engine has been moved. I've cut the back corner of this off so that it doesn't sit tight in here. I'm gonna leave that part of it unwelded. And the reason being, I don't want water to pool up in here or mud, a bit of road silt. You know, pools up in here and then leading to failure of the metal there over time. Now the passenger side, you may want to start up on that one. That was the easiest one for me as far as getting everything to fit. It has the most clearance if you have the turbo off especially. That uh, has, you have all the clearance in the world to be able to see and work with that engine mount as you're mocking things up. The driver's side gets a little bit tight, thermostat housing and everything on that side. I took the alternator off of mine to be able to do this, it made it a whole lot easier. And you will need to modify the track bar bracket to clear the alternator. So do this while you're working on the engine mounts. It's not part of the engine mount, something that you might as well take care of while you're in that area and so that you can get the engine fitted properly. The engine is light, but it is torquey, so it is a great idea to add as much gusseting as possible. When building my transmission cross member, one of the things I knew I wanted to stay away from was this OEM transmission mount. These things are notorious for coming apart. They're uh, just kind of a bad design for handling torque and stress from off-roading. They do a decent job of isolating the vibrations as they're designed to. But uh, yeah, there really haven't been a whole ton of great aftermarket options for this thing. So this is a new piece from Iron Man 4x4 Fabrication. These guys build this heavy duty transmission cross member mount. This is brand new from them. Uh, it is quarter inch, 100,000 PSI steel. This thing is compatible with both the AW4 and AX15 transmissions. And you're, there's a couple different orientations that you can set it up in to match your factory mount. And of course you have options for maybe mounting it a little bit differently if you're doing something that is custom. So for, uh, for my application, I wanna set this I think as low as I can go with it. Uh, so down in one of these lower holes. 
So I'm going to go ahead and start designing my cross member here. But uh, yeah, this is definitely a solid piece to consider if you're doing the, this kind of swap. For the X15, at least you have this piece that needs to go on top of that cross member. So we need to design with this in mind because I am going to continue to utilize this piece for my mount. This in the upper position, so this is taller than the stock transmission mount. Yeah, it just kind of barely sits in here and I might want to maybe just touch this with a grinder to make sure that that bolt isn't connecting with the uh, piece here and transferring vibration. But uh, if I put that in the lower position, I really can't get this to sit down uh, all the way, the way that it should be. The bolt, of course, is coming into contact there uh, and then the steel actually comes into contact down below. So here's where I'm at with designing the cross member and specifically the mount here. This is now set up to be identical to that or as close as possible. So I'm in the upper hole, well, lower, lower hole that makes this the lowest profile and all the way over to the one side here so that this is shifted to that side. Uh, as I was pointing out before, I cannot get this all the way in. I'm going to cut the bottom of this piece. The idea being that I could change this for one of these should I have that need. And to modify this rather than this piece is going to be the better option there. And I think that's just the most simple thing to do. So I'll cut that. This bolt will not contact here, though it might be close. If it is close, you know, I will clean it up just a little. All right, so that's what I cut off. I'm gonna wanna grind the edge of this just a little bit to make sure that the bolt isn't contacting that. Cut that, beveled it. We've got a good, probably quarter inch of clearance there. Maybe a little bit less. And then I ground a little bit of this plate, but I ended up beveling the head of this bolt then as well, just on one of the flat sides. So that's got a little bit of side to side movement that it can do but you know for the majority of it's it's going to want to do when it starts to get any kind of force on it is to twist this way you know a little bit this way as the engine twists things but it's going to uh most of your force is going to be that way so that's uh a nice setup i like that a lot Let's go ahead and compare for a second here the thickness of metals that we were working with. Stock, of course, in my hand, the uh, black glove there, and the Iron Man bit over here. Just no comparison there. The main measurement that's going to matter here for the cross member and figuring out exactly where everything should be on the new one is going to be this distance from where it mounts to the frame to where it mounts to the transmission. So I've laid a straight edge across here and measuring it and I'm seeing pretty much exactly two inches on each side. This doesn't have to be 100% exact the same as what it was, but the new mount piece is just a little bit different height than that one. And I do want to make sure that the, uh, you know, that everything is as close to what it would be with the OEM stuff as possible. So the two inches there is what I need to make on my new cross member. And I will go ahead and measure that the same way. Same thing over here. So 
there's three holes underneath that frame channel. You know, two were used for uh, this cross member for any given setup. So for the four cylinder engine, there's two holes that are used for the six cylinder engines. There's two holes for the back that are used. So there's three holes there to grab. ended up with uh, for the cross member I'm going to be putting a piece of steel across this which will be welded on there to strengthen this I have one on the other side so I wanted to show you the notch that I made there it is five and a half inches across at the bottom and about eight inches across at the top maybe seven and it's probably more like seven and three quarters at the top. Nothing beautiful, but it works. The uh, Iron Man transmission mount sits on that piece of two by four. It wouldn't fit inside there. You know, if I did, if I hadn't cut the sides away like this, it wouldn't fit inside there. But this overall is less than four inches across. And uh, there is also a plate, kind of see the step to it there on the welds. Plate on the bottom of this that it's sitting on. And this cut here is uh, flush with that plate. That way. And then that's front of the Jeep, back of the Jeep. So here's what the cross member looks like. I ran out of gas for my welder, so I couldn't finish it up before the edit here, but you get the idea. The 2x4 will be all closed in on the ends, and I'll clean it up and paint it, of course. Larger holes in the bottom there are drains, so that that trough area around the mount won't accumulate too much moisture. There's the cross member in place. I don't have enough bolts, so I didn't get all three in both sides. There's only two in each side. Pick up some more bolts at the hardware store. There's that beautiful Iron Man mount in there. And two bolts over here. Hold that in. For your drive shafts, as you know, I went with Adam's drive shaft, and I am absolutely thrilled with the quality of drive shaft and even more thrilled with the quality of customer service. If you're just a guy in a little home shop like me, don't even attempt to make your own drive shafts because you just don't have the tools to do it. If you've never done it before, even shortening a tube to kind of try to customize a drive shaft for short term is way more work than it's worth. The, the time that you would waste on building drive shafts is going to be better spent on something else. If you order drive shafts from a place like Adams, they're all the way on the other side of the country from me. And I think it took four days from the time I ordered them to the time they were at my door. So unless you're all set up with a lathe or a way to rotate the drive shafts and then balance them without breaking your toe, probably best just not to attempt it. That was my toe. Ah. Measuring your drive shafts, you wanna go from yoke to yoke and that's measuring off of this surface here, which would be the center of the U-joint. And with that horizontal, we'll ensure that that's uh, gonna be an accurate measurement. Same thing back here, that's horizontal. We're on that flange there. And here, and we've got about 35 and an eighth. All right, well, that's your measurements, yoke to yoke. And you can go ahead and just give those measurements to your drive shaft shop and they can make you custom drive shafts just based off of the front and rear measurements. Uh, that was a 1310 CV style yoke, which if you're running a slip yoke eliminator on the NP231, that's the type of the yoke that you're gonna have on there as well. So that's what I've just showed you. And uh, when you get your drive shaft set back, they'll just bolt right in and uh, you're good to go with that part of your swap.
Sturdy. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm going to do a little comparison here. This is a stock drive shaft, the one that I cobbled together to take this for a test drive. And <clears throat> I have my Adams drive shaft in the rear. So that is just hanging here, only attached to the front output and it does not drop very far below the front axle and we've got the Adams drive shaft in the back here and you can probably already tell it's sitting on the ground so uh, I would say their CV has a little bit more severe of an angle that it's capable of and I would also assume that that means it's a little bit more severe an angle that it can be at before it's going to induce any driveline vibrations. Uh, so yeah, that's not going to be like that. It's going to be fairly flat. But uh, that's just a quick comparison there between stock and beautiful. Well, that wraps up this part of the swap. Hope that your engine mounts go in smoothly. Your transmission cross member goes well. Remember, check out that uh, piece from Iron Man 4x4 Fabrication. It's really awesome. It does take some time to break in, so don't be uh, scared if when you first start running your swap that uh, it transfers a good bit of vibration. That cleared up for me in about five or 600 miles of driving. Uh, and Adam's drive shaft could not recommend them more. Definitely quality shafts and oh, I'm probably quicker than I could have gotten from a local shop, shop even. And it's not like they would have built them while I waited at a local shop. So don't hesitate to do mail order for those because really it couldn't be a better experience. But uh, anyway, tune in next time. We will get into some more uh, areas of the swap. We've still got to talk about the uh, air intake system and the intercooler, the electrical components, which I know a lot of you are really interested and finding out more about. And of course, coming up is gonna be my driving experience with it, which is phenomenal. Thing is awesome. It is on the road. So, spoiler alert, the thing's crazy. Don't miss the 4.0 at all. Catch you next time.